Welcome to All Things Moore County, Moore County's weekly radio show highlighting the many facets of the Sand Hills. That includes real estate, lifestyles, community, and neighborhoods. And now, from four properties, here's your host, Bill Sahadi. Good morning, and welcome to the talk show, All Things Moore County. Um, we're getting close to March, uh, moving into the spring season, and things are moving this year so quickly. Every year, it seems I say it gets quicker and quicker. Um, We've made references on the show in the past about how this is the um, the tenth year of the show, and it seems like just yesterday, in August of '09, we we did our first show when it was called All Things Real Estate, and that was right after the 20, 2008 uh, debacle with the economy, uh, where real estate prices took a hit, and um, and the All Things Real Estate sort of lasted about a year and a half, and we were able to. Um, uh, st we still do real estate shows, but we were able to generalize a little bit more and um, call the show All Things More County. So starting our 10th year gives us an unusual perspective, but not as unusual and probably not as accurate as my guest today, who is David Sinclair, who is the managing editor of the pilot, um, and he has been in that position since 2000. Um, even though he wasn't born in Moore County, I think he started out here at four or five years old, so he qualifies. And David has a great story to tell and a great perspective um, on a lot of stories uh, that have happened in particular over the last 10 years, but even prior to that. Um, so with that, I want to say good morning and welcome, and I'm so glad you could come back and, and join us on the show. Absolutely. Good morning. Great to be with you, especially on such an, a momentous occasion. Oh, yeah. I That's mean, awesome. 10 years, you know, the problem is the older you get, the faster. It goes fast. Absolutely. Each, each decade. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, we, we could actually start from just last week and move back, because I have a lot of questions to ask you, and I know you have a lot of stories to share. But you had the same privilege I did um, a couple of weeks ago. We had Craig Shirley on, yeah. who was the author of Rendezvous with Destiny, and he was here for the Reagan dinner. At the same time, I guess, that week, you had the chance to interview him. I did, and, uh, and, I, and I have to say I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I, I consider myself one of, the, one of the things that I cover, and I did in some of my other jobs before the pilot, was politics. I'm a, <clears throat> I'm a political junkie, and so I love – you know, I, we started talking about that book and, and all of the inner workings and, and the people he talked to and right. just how those campaigns were carried out. And there was a reference made that there was actually a North Carolina connection to all of that stuff with Jim Holzhauser. That's right. And uh, it was just absolutely fascinating. A matter of fact, uh, they had to stop the interview. Uh, we were running so long. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. He has a enjoyed. gift for gab. Yes, he does. Absolutely. And there's something about him, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, there's something about him that is so easy to like. And he's, oh, yeah. yeah. Some of the uh, – I, I had the fortune to start reading the book. Yeah, me too. And, did you? Yeah. It read like a novel. Yeah, it does. I love it. And some of those characters, Robert Dole, Newt Gingrich, Jimmy Carter – um, there were so many. Um, did you know? I didn't even remember John Connolly ran for president in 1980. I didn't until I did some research on the book for the interview. Yeah, he could he could make a movie out of that book. Absolutely, he could. Yeah. Um, it's like that movie Goodfellas, which came out in 1990. <laughs> yeah, so many yeah. people like my parents had loved that movie because it captured a time in the early 60s. Yeah, that resonated. Yeah, and the political. Um, field or the political um, horizon in the 70s and 80s were so well documented. Right. Bring it back to life. Yeah. Well, and, and the thing I told him that was really fascinating, doubly fascinating for me, aside from being a political junkie, is right. 1980 was the year that I turned 18 and uh, registered to vote. Um, and so I very well remember, uh, I wasn't covering those elections back then, but I very well remember the four years of the Carter presidency. And, right. And I remember a little bit about seeing the Republican National Convention in 76. I actually have memories of that and that, uh, that, that incredible floor battle yep. know, for the nomination. With Reagan and Ford. And Ford, exactly. Do you remember, do you remember, and I have about eight or nine years on you, but do you remember the debate between Ford and Carter when Ford misspoke about Eastern Europe? 
And if vaguely, you don't, okay, no, I, I do. I, re, I do remember. Fortunately, I guess in some ways, I didn't maybe think this when I was growing up. You know, my parents had me had my sister and I watch a lot of this stuff growing up, right? So we could be educated right. when we when we became registered voters. And Craig is he's sort of a peer. He's yeah. a couple of years younger. He's right in between the two of us, yeah. and um, he loves what he does. It, Absolutely. It shows. Um, one of the uh, most um, distinguishing characteristics I find about ha- having guests here in the last 10 years is when you're talking to somebody who loves what they do, mm-hmm. there's a huge qualitative difference uh, oh, yeah. in their message, right? Oh, absolutely. Same thing when I'm interviewing somebody. Right. Even though it's for print, it's the for, same thing. Um, you grew up here. You grew up in the um, Moore County school system. Yep. Aberdeen. I'm an Aberdeen boy. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you and your sister, yeah. um, Terry, yep. um, and you were uh, you graduated Pinecrest in 80? I was in 80, and oh. she was in 82. She's two years younger than I am. Okay. Uh, did you both, it's amazing that you're both still here in Moore County. Absolutely. Did you, did you leave and come back, or did she leave and come back? I've been here the whole time. Um, she, uh, she was gone for uh, several years. I think the biggest part of her time away was at Coastal Carolina. She was there for 12, 13 years as their uh, director of choral music. But she's now back here full time. Uh, I've actually had three different uh, car- career iterations here. I started out in radio. Right at uh, WIOZ for 10 years as the news director and morning show guy on the FM. And then uh, I did that from 83 to 93. And then I was a staff writer for the Fayetteville Observer from 93 to 2000. And I came. But I was based here. I functioned as their Moore County Bureau. And then, of course, came to the pilot uh, as the managing editor in 2000. Yeah, and I moved here in 99, so you okay. were in between oh, Fayetteville. Came, yeah, yep, that was right during, right before the transition. You came during the big year. The big ninety nine because of the open. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. So uh, it's it's really funny. I moved here in uh, February of ninety nine. In June of ninety nine, I rented out my house, the U.S. Open, hmm. and smart. I, I lived there in Pinehurst for a year, and then yeah. I, I moved the following year to Southern Pines. But in the garage of my house after the open, John Daly, Dick Enberg, Maceo Aoki. Roger Malpe, and you say, how did that all happen? Yeah. So my house was in the Woodlands, which was close to the entrance on um, uh, Morganton Road. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right what we're talking about. And I was, it was dumb luck on my part. I didn't know. I yeah. just knew my yeah. place. And so um, some of the media were staying at my place, and nice. they had a little barbecue. At, and that was the year where John Daly took his putter and threw <laughs> yeah. it across the green, yep. or the ball across yeah. the green, yeah. disqualified himself. Yep. Um, but that was a different time. Mm. The fresh market was just starting to open. Absolutely. There was really nowhere to get a cup of coffee. And so when the fresh market opened, he said, oh, now there's a place to get a good cup of coffee. Mm. But the Moore County in 1999 versus today, it's like night and day. Oh, absolutely. We, uh, we did a, we did a big year end piece two years ago. We do this thing every year called the newsmaker of the year. Yeah. And uh, the package we did was about growth. We called growth our newsmaker of the year and almost did an entire A section of stories related to that. And uh, and 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 1999 was a was a was a was a very a defi- I, uh, And Pat Corso, who I interviewed for the main piece, said this too. So I'm not. Right. It's not just me saying it. That was a very defining moment for this county because it literally put us on a world stage. Right. Where where all these suddenly suddenly these people started seeing Pinehurst, and and the business and the influx of business and people that started coming afterwards, uh, uh, he posed a question to me when I was talking with him. Do you do you you wonder how this place would have turned out had that not happened? When you say had that not happened, that, that open that the open US, not come right, and that uh, the the sort of the piece that we worked on that actually goes back to '84 uh, when Club Corps came and bought Pinehurst. And I actually, that was probably one of the first big stories I ever covered. Uh, I was a brand new, uh, I was like this, this green wet behind the ears radio news reporter. Yep. And uh, Ed Coleman, who was the, uh, he was the CEO of Pinehurst, the consortium of banks owned it. And, uh, and we started hearing rumors, you know, at the radio station that Pinehurst was, a, that they were, the banks were going to sell it. They had taken the resort over in 81 and he was chairman of the county planning board. And I'll never forget this. 
I badgered that man. I called him. I would call him. I would call him regularly, sometimes uh, several times during the week, to ask if there was any news on uh, on the sale of Pinehurst. And uh, I had gone up to Carthage for a county planning board meeting, and and as I said, Ed was the chair. And as soon as I walked through the back door of the courthouse, he walks up to me and says, "Here, I want you to have this." And it was a news release announcing that they were oh, wow. selling the club core. Wow! And from that point, and what they've done to to fix the to basically restore the that resort, the Pinehurst, is where all of this started, in the eyes of a lot of people. Right. And so I remember it. Yeah. Very well. Yeah, ninety nine was a pivotal year. Yeah. Um, it, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it true that today there are three times as many hotel rooms? in Moore County as there were in 1999. I've heard so many different... I've heard that. I mean, I, 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 can't, I can't say that as a, okay. for a fact, but there are definitely a lot more. That's for, right. That is for certain. Um, the, the tourism industry has exploded, exploded since then. And the tourism industry has exploded, but at the same time, there's been a... It's almost like a tsunami yeah. where the pressure underneath the tourism is a demographic shift that has also taken place in the last 15, 20 years. Oh, yeah. And it's, uh, I, and, I, and, and going back, and, and I'll, I'll go back to the, to the, and I'll use Pinehurst, as I told you before we went on the air, you know, that's one of the beats I cover, so I'm very familiar with, and I, and I actually was covering all this back in the 90s, in the mid-90s, uh, when Pinehurst, uh, the village of Pinehurst created a parks and recreation department. That was in the minds of a lot of people, a momentous, it made the front page of the Fayetteville Observer at the time I was working there because that was an acknowledgement about what had primarily been uh, and then and, and continued probably for, for another decade as being mainly a retirement resort mm-hmm. community. But mm-hmm. even then, the young folks were starting to move in. And uh, But certainly in the last 10 to 15 years or even the last 10 years, it's been, from what I see, even more pronounced. They're building a... Even though the village said it's not just for young people, I mean, they're building a community center in Pinehurst. I would have n- never thought mm-hmm. in my early part of my career that mm-hmm. he really either one of those would have ever happened. So. Kudos to Pinehurst for recognizing the, the shifting, the changes, yeah. and the demographics. I mean, look at the club. Look at that gorgeous pool. Mm-hmm. Why do you think... Fifteen years ago, they would never have oh, th- of course not. thought even, to do that. Exactly. So even the the club itself has saw that change coming, yeah. and not everybody's playing golf. Um, and uh, it's just it's it's been a, it's been amazing to see. And I and and of course I have to be too careful about venturing too far down the opinion line. But you know, being as a, being a resident of Pinehurst, right now if we could just get a few more sidewalks, <laughs> I know. But I realize there are certain areas of the village where where residents don't want them, but. Yeah. And and the sidewalk yeah. demand is because of yeah the younger the younger family who yeah. right and that's that's been an issue that sort of had the the last time it reared its head in Pinehurst that sort of exposes the divide between the the older retired residents that don't necessarily want that versus the younger residents with the baby strollers and the children and the bikes that would rather be on a sidewalk rather than in the road so. the um. As I, as I travel through Pinehurst and Southern Pines and Aberdeen and Whispering Pines today, I see a completely different community than I saw in 1999. Oh, absolutely. Um, to, to, in the real estate business on a Friday afternoon, I have to go in the back seat of my car and pull up the gummies, mm-hmm. the fruit, the, the crackers, because of all the young families with their kids. They're in our car and they're making a mess. Yeah. Then it was always retired people moving here, right? Uh, looking to buy a home, um, play golf for the rest of their lives. Mm-hmm. And that's still there, but in so many ways, the, the younger families get to see us first before, the, you know, we get to see them before they get to see Moore County. Yeah. Well, the other thing, another huge component to that, and I'm sure you know this, um, about the about the military influx that came as a part of what happened at Fort Bragg with the two major commands moving over there. Uh, and I, again, I grew up in Aberdeen. Yeah. I grew up in Forest Hills, and uh, hmm. I'll use this as an example. So the neighborhood I grew up in now, there's this whole other section to it that's been built since I left there. And that's right. 
all almost predominantly military. That's right. And not just there, you see it out in the Whispering Pines, out toward Carthage and Bass. It's, it's just been amazing to see that influx. And I have a brother-in-law that's retired military. So, so some people will say that the military influx has changed the landscape of Moore County, and not always for the better. Some would say, yeah. He's yeah. got to be, yeah. He, yeah. I have to be careful. With uh, I know, I know. Yeah. So uh, the way I look at it is if the landscape of Moore County has changed in some aspects, the original pockets of what people remember about mm -hmm. Moore County mm -hmm. have actually become more valuable. Sure. And and there's that's a, a plus in that yeah. regard. Yeah. Um, but the stores, the demands, um, the, the type of products that are – have you ever counted how many hair salons there no, are? No, I have not. Do you want to uh, – I, I mean, <laughs> <Have> I, you? <laughs> 28. I see 28. Wow. Um, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, and uh, n was never the case in the, in the 90s that I recall. Sure. And when I used to come here to play golf prior to that. Yeah. Um, one of the things about the demographic changes – that have the greatest change I think has occurred in the school system. Oh yeah. Right? People Absolutely. move here for jobs and they move here for schools. Right. The military cover the jobs and they have kids and they pick us over um it seems that a lot of people select Moore County over Fayetteville for, for reasons about the schools. Oh absolutely. You hear that over and over again and at county budget budget hearings, that's what you hear. Yeah. You know, that, that that's why people that's why they're coming here. Yeah. And I have several close friends that have young young kids in school, and that's a big reason uh, why they're here. Had the Open not come here in '99, had Pinehurst not gotten on the um, the calendar, mm -hmm. do you think that the demand for the new schools that are going up would have ever come to fruition? M maybe over time. Yeah. Uh, that's a, that, that was a that was a interesting that was a conversation that when I talked with Pat Corso years ago about this story when I was doing that story you know you you wonder yeah how different would it be yeah had that not happened yeah and I'm not saying all the economic growth that's in, that's happened and I don't think he is either is because of that but that that that's a big part of it yeah a big part of it uh, we're going to come back in the second set um, our guest for the entire show is managing editor of the pilot David Sinclair. Um, who has a unique perspective, um, uh, not just of the last 10 years, but, um, gosh, going back since you got out of college in the 80s. Uh, this is All Things More County. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our um, second set of All Things More County. Um, our guest is managing editor David Sinclair. Um, David graduated um, high school and college here, probably in the Early to mid eighties. Early eighties. Early eighties. Yeah. High okay. school eighty, and went to Sand Hills in two years. Eighty two, graduated. So probably uh, more than most, he has seen the transitions that have gone on in Moore County, um, in particular the last ten or fifteen years, uh, where it's really been amped up. Um, you know, as the managing editor, um, you have had, you've been witness to a lot of stories. Um, um, in the last 15 years. Um, you mentioned the impact of the 1999 U.S. Open, how it changed the direction and so many things about our area. Mm -hmm. What are some of the stories um, in the last 10 or 15 years that have really stood out to you as, um, as pivotal moments? Well, we, we actually, <coughs> we probably jumped the gun on one of them. You mentioned it in the first segment because it's certainly, it certainly one of them is, is the demographic change. I mean, that's just yep. uh, having, having covered that from, from, from several different, uh, different vantage points has been, uh, it, it's just been striking to see that um, across, really across the board. Um, I, uh, that's probably permeated a lot of stories that we've done just in my, my, uh, I think about my, uh, 19 years at the pilot um, and all the stories that are somehow related to the to the growth of the area um, the the change the change in the demographics you mentioned the variety of stores that we have here mm -hmm. um, and uh, some of the obviously <clears throat> as a result of that like some of the transportation issues that we've had to deal with um, which are a direct result of growth, like the Western Connector, for example, mm -hmm. uh, which is one that uh, that actually reared its head in the 90s. 
uh, back long before I came to the pilot, and then a few years a few years ago it resurfaced again, and yep. now it's back on. So those transportation stories are are have been some some pretty big stories that we've had to cover, right? Um, in in this county, and it's all again it goes back, it goes back to that growth growth issue. J just this past week, um, you had a story out uh, about Publix. Oh yeah, um, there are. You know, you've got the the two factions in Moore County about growth yep. versus uh, no change and no growth, Absolutely. and then you've got the people in the middle. Yep. That goes on and on and on, and it seems like no matter what happens, not one uh, group is going to be a hundred percent pleased. No, but it's it again the fact that if it's if it is, and, and I wrote that story, and if, and if it is in fact Publix, and of course no one's saying for sure that it is, but a, a shopping center developer is looking at this property on 15501 and then there's another another property over on uh, 211 on the other side of Pine Wild there mm -hmm. where there's probably going to be some development activity Juniper Lake area um, exactly on the on the other end of Juniper Lake on the 211 side so the the fact that the get yeah, the developers are still looking here too that that's very telling um, you know they see the growth of this market and um, you know, I know, like, the, again, I, I'll go back to the village of Pinehurst. Uh, you know, a, another big story we, that we've been covering is this effort to develop their long-range plan. Right. Uh, and there's been a lot of interest in that by the residents over there. And, again, at the very first meeting, you, those two camps were very much evident, the ones that want to basically pull up the, you know, pull up the drawbridge and not let anybody in. Right. And then folks that recognize it's coming, let's just prepare for it and make sure that the growth that comes doesn't doesn't harm what we have here um and you know that that's going to keep playing itself out until next summer when they finally get a plan um wasn't it um reassuring to you though last year with the school bond referendum oh absolutely to find that um, people of all different generations voted in favor of it absolutely even if people didn't have kids pe yeah. and i and i saw that uh the, the first bond issue i ever covered in 86 um, we had a bond issue pass, and and again, it was uh, there was the concern, as there was this time, but it was even more amplified in '86 as to whether the older retirees would support a bond issue for schools when they don't have kids in their schools. Well, the voters answered that question because the bond issue in '86 passed. Mm. I forget the, the the dollar amount on that, but uh, at the time, it was it was a significant bond issue, and it passed with flying colors. Yeah. I think the argument that was used effectively last year, and they had a very uh, proactive group of um, parents and um, yep, absolutely. moms, um, where even if you didn't have kids in the school system, a and the idea of taxes possibly, you know, going up d down the road, it would also increase your uh, real estate values. Absolutely. So w whether you had kids in the school system or not. Because people want to come here. Yeah. For exactly. the, that argument is I've heard that several times in Pinehurst for the for folks as they start selling their homes. Yeah. You know, you want this place to be attractive so right. that somebody will come in and buy your home when you're ready to either downsize or well or move elsewhere. Um, that's what that's what you want to see. And uh, we're getting ready to have our next revaluation too, which you, we were talking about big stories and so that's right. unlike 4 years ago when we actually saw the overall value of property drop a couple of percent which had not happened in a long time this this time it's going to be going the other way right so somebody was on last year and, and they spoke about uh, moore county and they described this area as a micropolitan you, you know the, the oh, term yeah. right i've heard that term yeah uh do you think it applies in a, i mean based on the description and and i can't as i say i can't sit here and cite it uh yeah. in a chapter and verse but uh yeah. it sounds like it it's um it's a combination of some of the uh, uh, advantages of an urban area, um, but still retaining Absolutely. a lot of the uh, small town charm. Yeah. And you see that with some of the developments of some of the um, shopping centers that have gone up, yeah. that they're out on main um, uh, th uh, throughways. Sure. Um, but the pockets of the neighborhoods still hopefully you know remain the same oh, and, in, yeah. and intact and i've always thought too that and we we talked you we you and i talked about this before we went on um about the the amenities of an urban area and i and i can't help but think too is the the the, the cultural and arts offerings that we have in this county right. are are far above what you would probably see in in what 
you know, it's still rural in some ways. I mean, we're, we're not as rural as we were 20 years ago, obviously, but still I've been, I've always been amazed at uh, how cosmopolitan we've, we are in that regard yeah. with the things we have. And I, that's attributable obviously to a strong arts council and right. arts in the schools and the symphony coming here for doing concerts in Moore County. I mean, how many, <clears throat> I don't know how many counties, the other counties they come to outside of more outside of Raleigh, but it's not many. We've um, we've tried in the in the past to highlight some of the um, the students who go through the Moore County school systems and have had a lot of success in the arts. Sure. Um, some of the athletes who have gone through here um, in the last couple of years through the Moore County school system, and you have firsthand knowledge um, through your writing, through your photography. Sure. Um, uh, you've gotten to know the parents of some of these kids, and you've seen. Um, what the system can produce. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and as, as we mentioned, I have some ki uh, people, I, kids that I grew up with now have kids in the schools, which is really, mm -hmm. has been really neat to see. And, uh, you know, I, I've had an opportunity through the, through the work with, not just with the pilot, but also, co you know, just sort of photographing the sports events over there and doing stuff on my own social media. Um, I've had an opportunity to get to know a lot of just really outstanding young people. Yeah. Um, a lot, of, a lot of them are student athletes, but uh, through the other program, through the arts programs, and it's just, uh, it, the, I must admit, probably in, in the last five or six years, that's probably been one of the, one of the uh, most wonderful things that I've, I've actually been able to see and getting to know these kids and their parents and, and seeing the good thing. And, of course, now, I, and I'm sure this is true with the other schools, too, Union Pines and Northmore, but, I, you know, I'm a Pinecrest guy, obviously, and, uh, and, and I just I love seeing what's happened with that school. You know, can remember how it was when I when I graduated in 1980. It was a lot different. When I gr I came here, um, I think the Pinecrest football team. I think they lost by an average of 40 points a game, yeah, if not I mean, more. If not more. Yeah. And it was such. And I remember going to a, a Mid Pines function. I think it was in 07 yeah. when Chris Metzger that came. That was when he came. Yeah. Was it 07? Okay. Yeah. And um, he came in and he said and all the right things and. Um, it was mostly a retired group of people he was talking to. But from that golf tournament to today, mm -hmm. I mean, this past year, um, Chris had got some national prominence at, uh, it, by winning the $50,000 mm -hmm. um, monies that were earmarked, I guess, towards some of the, um, to Moore County, to mm -hmm. Pinecrest High School. Right. Um, the Pinecre Pinecrest program has become something to see absolutely and that would have been inconceivable 15 years ago right um and i and i think about it from when the school opened what it was like uh, i wrote a, a very in-depth it was a two-part series back in 2011 that i spent six months researching and interviewing for, about the history of pinecrest high school mm -hmm. and what that school has gone through and it had a very painful start mm -hmm. Um, and, and to what it's become today, mm -hmm. and not just athletics, but in the academics and the wonderful things that go on there and the, the arts program. And, uh, but it comes back as far as the community support, the thing that really turned the tide for Pinecrest, at least from the way I see it, is uh, a winning football team can do wonders for a school. Right. Um, and it's, it's a, I think it's, it's kind of helped shine, it helped shine a positive light on Pinecrest and other programs athletically and academically and in the arts and have, have flourished as a result of it. it. It brought the community support back into that school in a way I'd never seen before. And mm -hmm. I, I think a, a, a capping moment of that was when Chris Metzger won the national coach of the year, mm -hmm. uh, or most valuable coach of the year, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, that was pretty remarkable. And mm -hmm. that was not the school doing that by itself. That, that came as a result of community support. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the football team headed out on those playoff games and they had the send-offs for them, mm -hmm. uh, I hope we get to see that for a long time to come because yeah. that was just wonderful to see, the, the community embracing a school that uh, 20 years ago that would have not seemed possible. I remember 20, 25 years ago before I lived here, um, kids would hang out in the uh, Walmart parking lot or the, uh, the any of the, on a summer night. And yeah. Nothing to do, nowhere to go. Uh, no school to sort of rally around. Yeah. Uh, today, that rhythm has completely. Absolutely. Well, see, when I was in high school, we, are, we had athletic programs that did well, 
uh, when I was there. But the football team for probably 20-plus years, I think, just really struggled. They made the playoffs, I think, one year in 87. Yeah. Bergenbill was the coach. He came right after I graduated. Um, and um, football games were, were just not a fun affair. I was in the marching band, so I had to be at football. Mm-hmm. Uh, my senior year, I actually was the – I covered the games for the school paper, and the Aberdeen had a, day, a weekly paper back in the – and I actually was the sideline reporter for games in my senior year in the fall of 97. And I've been on the sidelines at football games now here at Pinecrest since 2014, mm-hmm. and it is completely – it's a totally different world at football games at Pinecrest. Right. The, sta- the stands are full. Kids and adults are everywhere. Um, it's just an incredible atmosphere. Yeah, you um, had a story. I had to. You had a story about one family, the Wilson family in oh, particular. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to ask you about. Yeah. So uh, the, this is a, this. I can think of two two striking examples, but the Wilson family is one that I really love. Um, the, uh, growing up in Forest Hills and Aberdeen, you know, a little neighborhood gang. We had our neighborhood basketball games at the Wilson House which is right across the street. And Barry Wilson was the middle of the three, uh, three boys at the time. There may be maybe four of them now, but there were three then. And uh, I kind of lost track of him there for a while. He'd moved out in the county, moved back here. Well, his, he was a star pitcher at Pinecrest back in, uh, back in the mid-'80s. His son Davis is now pitching at Pinecrest. Mm-hmm. And so I get to talk to both of them and, you know, and his wife at the games. And it's just, it's just really neat. Mm-hmm. It's really neat to see that. Mm-hmm. And the other one, the other one that's just that turned out to be a huge story for the pilot, Jan Andrews Benton, who's a high school classmate of mine, is her son is none other than Seth Manus, who pitched for the Cardinals. That's right. So I got to do the stories about and the Cubs too. The, no, that's your that's the Maples. Oh, I went to school right. with with his mom, You're right. you know, Tracy and Tim Tim Tim. I mean, it's, you, I, we could do a whole other thing on the Pinecrest stuff, but uh, right. But uh, Jan Jan's son and getting to do the front page story about him making it to the Cardinals and pitching in the World Series. And, of course, <clears throat> her dad, who was a de- dear friend of mine, Elmer Andrews, who'd passed, he's passed away several years ago, um, made, that story, made that story even more special for me in getting to do those about Seth when he made his, mm-hmm. made his climb to the major leagues. Gotcha. And, of course, Jan's best friend, uh, Tracy, uh, that, the, Dylan Maples is her son, and now That's he's it. with the Cubs. That's right. So That's it's pretty right. cool, and they all came through the Pinecrest baseball program, yeah. which you is had, incredible. The, and, and in addition to all the athletes that you've seen, you know, if you ask Chris Metzger how many kids does he have, yeah. he'll say 200. Oh, yeah. More than that. Oh, yeah. Um, we've had Chris on the show with some of the players. Yeah, and I've what he's that. What he's built here, he's a he's very paternal figure. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a, a very strong undercurrent of mentoring in, oh, yeah. in Moore County oh, yeah. with the kids. Absolutely, and what, what, what Tom Van Camp and those folks, and I don't want to start naming names because I'll start leaving people out that started the Sand Hills Patriot yeah. travel program and you know, helping the, the middle school programs getting stronger. Um, and they play the uh, – yeah, I think it's really cool that the two big middle schools, uh, Southern and West Pine, play their big rivalry game at Pinecrest. Right. Because they're all going to be playing for the same Each team other. when they get to high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I went out to, to March Madness this year for the first time at Pinecrest where I had all the teams out there, and, and, and Chris made the comment, the players – for the f- freshman JV and varsity team, stretched the length of the t- le- length of the field. Wow! They used to could barely find enough people to field teams, and now they have an abundance of players that want to come out and play. Right, which is wonderful. We also have um, a lot of courageous, uh, proactive students who have flourished in the arts. Absolutely, here in Moore County. Absolutely, and you've been um, um, front and center um, um, with a lot of your photographic essays. Yeah capturing some of the the events um any stories there any people that stand out to you well the it it and one <coughs> sort of in, in my book sort of transcends both both uh i'll, I'll use the uh, the the pry children nick Ma- uh, nick nick pry and his sister maddie maddie is a senior right and uh i've just been so impressed with with her academically but she's also a pretty good soccer player and nick is you know pretty right. pretty smart fella Academically, he's pitching for the University of North Carolina Tar Heels, and I love that. I'm a state fan, saying that. And uh, you were talking about the Costanzas and the and the, the the opportunity to capture some of the some of the dancing mm-hmm. uh, things that they've been in, they've and been things great. that my sister have been involved in. That's right. Carousel and and programs like that. 
Um, it's just been incredible to see that. We've had one of the students on, uh, uh, more than once, uh, Callie McIntyre. Absolutely. She, um, not only did she come on the show when she was the reigning Miss Moore County teen, yep. um, this kid's resume, mm -hmm. she, she lapped me like oh, six yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. But more than that, um, she took the bull by the horns. She came on and she hosted her own show on food allergies. Yeah, yeah. She did a show on the uh, drama club yep. um so some of these kids you know they sports the, the the kids in sports um it's it's more traditional but in the arts it's you know one-on-one -on -one, you're out there on the stage oh, and absolutely it takes a it takes a rare kind of courage and she's one I, she's another one i've gotten to <clears throat> i was captured her i i to say i captured her crowning moment when she uh -huh. was crowned miss moore county outstanding teen i'm actually on the the committee for the miss okay. moore county greater san Diego's greater carolina scholarship pageant association and followed her to raleigh and saw her win oh, second did you? runner up yeah and uh know, know her family know her mom and dad and yeah. and that again that having those connections to the families really makes it special you know if they took a time capsule today um 2019 and they buried it um, Moore County in 2019, my guess is there would be a lot of stories that you've written or a lot of pictures that you've <laughs> taken that would be in that, that would capsule. That would be pretty cool, absolutely. Don't you think? Uh, well, I, I, I would hope. Yeah. Um, and your sister, let's talk about Terry just for a little yeah, while. Yeah, she, she, I always like to say she's the more famous of the Sinclairs, Sinclair <laughs> children. She, uh, um, she and I, and I, and, 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 I, and, I, and I, I've boasted about her on my own Facebook page about how proud I am of her. She, uh, yeah. Um, as I said, she she uh, she was actually at Pinecrest. She came back and was the course teacher at Pinecrest for a few years, right. around the time the auditorium was built in the, in the early '90s. Um, while she was working on her doctorate at UNC Greensboro, she has her doc she got her she she got her undergraduate at Carolina, which didn't make myself and my dad happy, being state fans and all. But right. anyway, and then went to Florida State for her master's and UNCG for her doctorate. But she's had a she's had an incredible, uh, I think, an and I'm biased, but an yeah. incredible career. And she's yeah. she started probably 20 years ago or so ago, maybe more than that, uh -huh. uh, as the music director at Community Presbyterian. Mm -hmm. And uh, and as as uh, I think the folks there would tell you, she's done a wonderful job. I've been to some of her music programs. Yeah. And she and her 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 best friend Kirsten Foyles, who who does the children's music. Yeah. Um, I went to their their music Sunday, uh, their their Christmas music Sunday in December, and was just. I've been been for probably the last five years, maybe, and I'm just I've always been I'm just blown away by the quality of it. Kirsten um, was the very first real estate attorney I had met when I'll I came be. here. I remember when she brought Keegan yep. into the office as a newborn, yep. and um, she was my go-to real estate attorney. And oh yeah, a very formidable lady. Yep. How did Terry and Kirsten hook up? The, through church. Through yeah, church. Through church. And Keegan's another athlete. Oh my I, gosh! I covered. I've gotten to cover her with lacrosse, and, uh, and Be have just beautiful girl. Impressed with her. Oh she yeah. She better be all conference this year. Is she? Is she that good? I think so. I'm biased, but I think so. but she's also a great singer. Yeah, absolutely. And she's. Be I and ran she, into her at Panera the other day with her two sisters and yeah. her and Jody's mom. Yeah. And they have just all grown up. Oh, so well. And they took Keegan took piano from my mom. My mom taught piano for, gosh. 50 years in Aberdeen. And, Is that right? Uh, so she had the had, had the full foils girl. And uh, so we've got, you know, the, the, the two twins that are at Pinecrest now. Keegan's a senior. Uh, so we have one that's a – and I don't want to get their names wrong. I, that's why I'm, I'm careful not – That's okay. we got one that's a cheerleader. Uh, uh, Lauren and Caden. Lauren, yeah. And then and then the other's a photographer. So which I – Oh, no, I, did, I thought they were both cheerleaders. Yeah, well, they may be, okay. but, but one of them's also into photography. <clears throat> so we've had some fun with that too. They, um, they're, those three girls are an example of um, what good parenting can do. Oh, huh? absolutely. I mean, they're yeah. just all like, yeah. they just hit it. Every one yeah. of them. I yeah. love seeing them. That Keegan, though, I mean, she has got her mother's grace. Yeah. And um, the drive of both her parents. Right. And um, as sweet as she can yeah, be. Yeah, I know Kirsten and Jody well. Jody's another good state guy. So I. Yeah. He's right in there with Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So you've done your best to contribute to that time capsule I was talking about. And, you know, I grew up in New York, in Brooklyn, New York, in Bergen County, New Jersey. Yeah. 
I'm, but I first came here in 1979 on a golf trip. I was four years out of college. And, uh, but, you know, I call this home, and 20 years now gives me some perspective. It's yeah. not the same perspective you have, but now you get to see families growing up here and going through the school system. Um, Moore County is, is, is really a great place to live. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I've been lucky to be here my, basically. My, <coughs> well, I have been here my whole career. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very fortunate in that. And it's home. So, you know, my mom still lives in the same house where I grew up, Maverdine. A lot of, um, uh, not a lot of people have the perspective that you do and, uh, or the ability to, um, you know, to communicate it the way you do. And um, I'm glad that you could come in and join us, especially because this is, it. you know, our 10th year, but it's your 25th, 30th, yeah. right? Um, our guest has been David Sinclair, the managing editor of The Pilot. And, and by the way, kudos to you guys because in this age of social media, this electronic age, um, it seems to me like The Pilot has done – Everything that they can do to diversify and to keep up with the times. Absolutely. In getting the messages out about the community. Absolutely. I consider myself very fortunate to be there. Yeah. yeah. Not everyone, not yeah. every print um, no. publication has done that. Absolutely. Um, so kudos to you on that end. And we look forward to a lot of your um, uh, stories in, in 2019 Excellent. as we move forward. Thank you for having me. David, it was a pleasure. Really Absolutely. enjoyed My talking too. to you. Um, We'll, um, we'll be back next week. This is All Things More County. Thank you.